My name's Chris Sowsby. I run the Klim Type Foundry and I'm based in Wellington, New Zealand. I started Klim unofficially, I suppose, when I was a student. We had, in the second, our second year of typography, we had to do something and I just invented a project called the Klim Type Foundry. And then when I graduated, I got more interested into it, uh, in drawing typefaces and had to do this because nobody would hire me, essentially, because I was an pig-headed, big-headed, just thought he knew everything but knew nothing. You know what students are like, right? When they're done, they're like, yeah, I'm so amazing. And in hindsight, I wouldn't hire me either. So sort of forced into a situation of trying to be graphic designers, no money, no clients, and then that, as that was failing, the typefaces took off. Some of my bigger clients would be the Financial Times, which is a large financial newspaper, Tourism New Zealand, and that was quite large. So the reason Pure Pakati looks like it does for tourism is it was kind of the usual design process. We had concepts and we had possible directions, but that was all kind of destroyed. And so we just worked with their existing logo, which is a bad digital 90s typeface, and we just tried to work with what we had, and that informed effectively the sort of the blueprint or the skeleton of it before Rangi carved it out of wood and it was printed and it was, he breathed life into it essentially. So digital outlines are dead, there's nothing inherently vivacious or kind of even interesting about them but as soon as Rangi carved them into wood, he breathed life and energy and, and that's why it looks like it does. The name Pākāti means incised or notched and the three niho is a tooth notch. And the recurring pattern of three is takitoru, which is a recurring motif through a lot of Māori art and design. And there are various kind of stories or myths or um, legends about where the recurring pattern of three comes from. But for this one, it was based on an um, origin story. Personally, I'm a magpie and that's essentially how I work. So what I do is I buy our type specimens from the online and I just steal ideas out of those. I'll just flick through and there'll be these great old things that haven't been digitized or the original versions or whatever. And I'll look at it and I'll just cherry pick and that's effectively how I work. And that's, I think, how a lot of typeface designers work. And I'm pretty certain that there's no new genres of typefaces, not for the Latin, uh, for the Latin alphabet anyway, but there's only people's interpretations of it. I'm pretty sure we're all tapped out for styles, like individual kind of classifications. But within those genres and subgenres, there's a lot of room for personal expression and reinterpretation. And that's kind of how I think I'm working. The one of the questions I get asked a lot by students is, what is your inspiration? And the work is the inspiration, right? You can't. I don't just sit around going, I'm just waiting for the perfect light bulb moment to happen. It's, it doesn't happen. The work generates the work. Like you make something and it turns to shit or it doesn't work and you learn from it like, well, that didn't work, so I'm probably not going to do that again. You just, you have to be doing it. The work is the inspiration and the work is the work. <laughs>